Well, good morning, all. Those of you who are physically present, those of you who are present in real time, and those of you who are present later, whenever, wherever you are, it is good that we are gathered here. And we're, we're gathering here in front of our, our old window, our new window, and our ever-present door, remembering that uh, we have a heritage that we carry and that we bring into this place, but that our place is also virtual. We have our, our views and our, our uh, likes and shares on social media that remind us that we are not alone and that we have a reach beyond what it is that we might see amongst ourselves. And so let us keep that in mind and utilize that to share the good news because we live in an age where uh, you don't have to go knock on a door and say, excuse me, do you have a few moments to talk about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, right? And have a door slam in your face. You don't have to do that. You can just hit uh, share <laughs> on the video. You can hit like. You can share something and people will know what it is that you stand for and what you do. And of course, we have the door that opens out to the world where so far this year we have served. And this number I know is still short because I don't think it has the recent essentials closet or anything recent from Stone Soup in it. But the number of people reached through our ministry is 4,193 so far this year. Pretty remarkable numbers considering the numbers of who we are and what we work with, right? And all of this is about how God works through us. And that's what we're beginning this series looking at today. We are looking at ways in the past that God has made what can seem to be a way out of no way. That there was just no way it was going to happen and God found a way. God made a way beyond our imagination. So that's what we want to open ourselves up to in this series, in this day's worship in particular. And each week during this series, there are two places for you to participate. One individually and one more collectively. Okay, And both will involve questions. Each week we will have a thorny theological question. Right? There will be something that's provocative to make you think. And we may or may not answer it. We will just kind of keep it in mind. And you'll see the thorny theological question at the beginning. So during the worship for ga the music for gathering, you will you will see the question and just contemplate it. Keep that in mind. It helps to set the the tone for the day. And then later during the anthem, you'll see a question that is meant for you to answer because it'll be part of our offering. We offer not just our physical gifts, but our physical selves in our time and our talent. And so the question each week will be presented for you to answer some way that you are offering yourself. And it'll be on the theme each week. And you'll see that question. And then when it comes time for offering, I will actually be asking people to respond. So keep that in mind. You might want to uh, figure out exactly how you want to, to say your response if, uh, if indeed you have one. So that's where we are. Let us take these moments to focus and center and enter into worship, beginning with the reading of our mission statement. Seeking to walk in the way of Jesus, we are an open and affirming church, faithfully using who we are and what we have to serve those on the margins of our community. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here.
An African American folk saying claims that our God can make a way out of no way. Noah, Abraham and Sarah, Joseph, and Moses each persevered with God's help amidst almost unimaginable darkness. Through the narratives of these biblical archetypes, we come to experience our own stories in a more hopeful way than we may ever have imagined. This is a series for those times in your life where there seems to be no way out, and for the times when God shines a light in the darkness, providing that way after all.
Good morning. Our scripture this morning is from the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verses 5 through 22, chapter 8, verses 6 through 12, and chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. Yahweh saw the great wickedness of the people of the earth, that the thoughts in their hearts fashioned nothing but evil. Yahweh was sorry that humankind had been created on earth. It pained God's heart. Yahweh, sa Yahweh said, I will wipe this human race that I have created from the face of the earth, not only the humans, but also the animals, the reptiles, and the birds of the heavens. I am sorry I ever made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of Yahweh. Noah was just and blameless, blameless among his contemporaries and walked in accord with God. Noah had three children, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. It was clear to God that the world was corrupt and full of violence. God looked at the earth and saw that it had gone to ruin. All flesh had defiled its way upon the earth. So God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me for they are the cause of all its violence. I will destroy them and the earth as well. Build an ark for yourself out of Cyprus. Build rooms in the ark and coat it with pitch, both inside and out. Its dimensions are to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet tall. Put a roof over it with an overhang of 18 inches. Put a door on the side and give it a lower deck and a second and a third deck below that. What I have decided to do is to flood the earth and to destroy all flesh under heaven that has the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will die, but I will establish my covenant with you. You and your wife will go into the ark with your children and their spouses. Bring with you two of every living thing, one male and one female, of all flesh to preserve them. Every kind of bird, every kind of animal, and every kind of thing that creeps on the ground. Two of each are to come to you to keep alive. You must also store up all kinds of food to eat, food for yourselves and food for all the creatures with you. Noah did as he was instructed. He did everything that God commanded. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the porthole he had made in the ark and sent out a raven. It would fly off and return to him as the waters were drying up from the earth. Then Noah sent out a dove to see if the waters had subsided on the earth. The dove, finding no way to perch, returned to the ark, for there was still water over the whole earth. Putting out his hand for the dove, he brought it back into the ark. Noah waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. In the evening, the dove returned with a freshly picked, plucked olive branch in its beak, and Noah knew that the waters were receding from the earth. After seven more days, he again sent out the dove, and this time it did not return. God then said to Noah and his family, I hereby establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, birds, cattle, and the earth's wildlife, everything that came out of the ark, everything that lives on the earth. I hereby establish my covenant with you. All flesh will never again be swept away by the waters of the flood. Never again will a flood destroy all the earth. God said, Here is the sign of the covenant between me and you and every living creature for ageless generations. I set my bow in the clouds, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, my bow will appear in the clouds. Then I will remember the covenant that is between me and you and every kind of living creature, and never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all flesh. Whenever my bow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all living things on the earth. Here ends this morning's readings. All the news that's fit to canonize. This is the Christian Education News Network. World News Yesterday with Paige Turner. 
Yes, yes, I'll pick up something for dinner on the way home. Uh huh. Um, oh, but can you please water the plants because there's no rain in the forecast for days? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh so gotta go, gotta go. <laughs> <clears throat> Today's top story is a CENN exclusive. Oh, oh, um, everyone knows about this and is talking about it. Uh, we lead off with a story about a controversial construction project in Mesopotamia, where a 600-year-old amateur meteorologist is predicting a major natural disaster. His unauthorized mitigation plan has residents concerned. For local reaction, we turn to CENN's disaster correspondent, Gail Storm, who is on the scene. How are we? How are we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Paige, hi. Thanks so much, Paige. Gail Storm here for CENN News here in Mesopotamia, where we have heard some. Shut that thing up! Where we've been hearing that there's been a disturbance in the local area, something to do with uh, perhaps an in we go over there. perhaps an incoming weather incident that we really wanted to make sure we had someone on I, on the site for. I can't do this anymore. And I'm here with a local to the area, one of this yeah. fellow Noah's neighbors, Donald Jones. Donald. Hi. How you been doing, Donald? Uh, I've been better. Can you tell us how long have you lived in the area, Donald? Oh, I've lived here around about 20, 25 years. 20, 25 years. And and has Noah always been your neighbor? No, no, no. My life was perfectly fine until about 10 years ago. Uh -huh. He seemed like he minded his own uh, his own business. Yeah. And then in the past, uh, I don't know, year and a half, he has been ruining my life. R ruining your life? Ruining my life. Uh huh. And and can you tell us a little bit what what's Noah been doing that's that's been causing such problems well, in the neighborhood? Night and day, he's hammering, banging. I can't sleep. My wife can't sleep. My kids can't sleep. So we're living absolutely miserable lives right now. And, which is tough. I mean, you're trying to be a good guy, and your neighbor is out yeah, here making. Yeah, you know, I, I, I consider myself neighborly. And now, in the past uh, couple of months, animals, every creature that God has ever created, is been tromping in our neighborhood. Look, just just through here, just, just right through here, eating my crops, crapping in my yard, everything that I, I I just can't anymore. I just can't. Can you tell us a little bit what kind of animals have you been seeing? I mean, there are only certain animals I've never even seen before. You know, I, I'm Middle Eastern here. I don't know. I, I, I've seen rhinoceroses. I think. What's a rhinoceros? Something with a big. It looks like a very aggressive unicorn. Okay. Very, very uh -huh. angry, forthcoming unicorn. Speaking of unicorns, is that is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, that looks there, like it. Yeah. There he goes, and seems to only be one. Um, yeah, I don't know. He's thinking about breeding them. I don't know how he's gonna do this. I don't know. And, and on top of the animals, there's horrible, horrible insects that keep on coming in too. Well, why, why, why do you think he's trying to gather all of these, all of these animals? Because the guy's crazy. He's nuttier than a bed bug. He thinks that like he's trying to save the world. We're all gonna get on on a boat. Flood's gonna come. That seems it's, it's a lovely day yeah, today. It's a day. Yeah, the guy needs. He has mental health problems. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Uh, and if I remember right, when we were in the studio, we didn't see any rain forecast. Do you normally have a lot of rainfall in this area? No, no. It's pretty, pretty even. 75. Not too hot. Not too cold. You know, I, I've never had a problem here. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, having said that, some of those clouds look a little yeah, concerning. I don't know. I, I'm not too worried about it. You I don't seem know. like a, a great guy, Donald. So I'm sure you'll be fine. Yeah. I'm I do my best. You know, I try to be a nice guy around here, but, you know, this guy's been ruining my life. Yeah. Well, from the crazy neighbor, <laughs> Noah has been ruining people's lives, and I'm sure everything will be fine. Donald, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, uh, good we'll, luck to you. Yeah, good luck to you and your crops. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I want to call the authorities. What do you, we can at least get what's, what's, on this. What's that? Is that a, it's got a huge neck and, like, spots. Yeah. What is that? I have never seen that before. <laughs> Someone will come up with a weird name for it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Back to you, Paige. Yeah. A solution in search of a problem. Thank you, Gail. I'm being told that it has begun raining. Really raining. Um, well, it appears that uh, Noah should be listened to. If he is correct, it would appear that God has created a way to save humanity along with a pair of every creature. And you heard it here first. Thank 
you for watching World News Yesterday, your source of information about ancient interactions with our still speaking God. We hope it helps you develop a faith to find a way out of no way. <clears throat> Today's top to top. Mm. <laughs> Shoot, that was going to be so good. I had to find my spot. Today's top Tory. Today's top Tory. <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> red the other leather, red leather, yellow leather. <clears throat> oh, oh. <laughs> I'm being told. Oops, I'm wrong earbud. Wrong ear. <laughs> you, you're allowed to have two. <laughs> Would you like a real one? Wouldn't be, wouldn't be able to hear if I were in both ears. <laughs> Got to restart the slide. <laughs> um, the the cast and crew uh, did not have any fun or anything. Obviously, uh, there was nothing but hard hard work. What's that? It was very. <laughs> it was a very hot day. Um, um, we spared no expense to bring in a giraffe. So, you know, <laughs> as soon as we get the slide working again, we can at least move the camera. We can, uh, while you work on that, because <laughs> that's just going to say sermon, which is, you'll figure out in a second is what's happening. So, uh, we, we, we are going to have visits from um, Paige and, uh, and Gail and 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 some other uh, staff of CENN uh, over the next few weeks as well. So uh, um, be prepared. <laughs> be prepared. There are a few more outtakes too. Go figure. But um, we did we did have fun doing that, and it, and it is an epic story. That's kind of the point, isn't it? That there is a lot of story to tell. Noah's Ark must have been the original blockbuster. Right? We're, we're only into a few chapters of the first book of the Bible. And here we have three chapters of story. Obviously, they, they spent a lot of energy recording this story. They must have been telling it to one another over a long time. Probably hundreds and hundreds of storytellers telling it to thousands and thousands of people. Um, you know, they didn't have television. They didn't have CENN. <laughs> they, they didn't have movies to go to. They had stories to tell. And so the flood story must have been a story told again and again and again. And like any good story, it would have been told in multiple ways, <laughs> right? Think about the uproar these days that people have over um, the, the backstory being told about Lord of the Rings, right? And the casting oh my goodness people of color were they really in the story can we can we do things differently than you know can we retell them um can captain america be female i mean you know it was captain america right whatever you know i mean it's okay because it's story truth isn't in the details of historical practice but in the story that's being told we understand that in the stories that we tell and so we should look at the bible that way as well so why was there this big flood story? Well, the Hebrews weren't the only ones telling it. There were other flood stories at the time. And, you know, if you live in Mesopotamia, where it floods a lot, it makes sense that you would have stories about flooding. It's what you know, right? And it's also potential that, that someone wandered up a mountain and saw a seashell. Okay, we know it as a fossil. But, right, the fossil record is up there in the mountains. We had to explain that. Well, how do you think they explained it? Big flood. That's what would work, right? That the water level must have once been as high as this mountain. We have other theories in science today that say it wasn't necessarily how that happened. But it's a good explanation, as good as any. If anything, it's a good 
story, right? And so they had all of this time to tell this story and they committed a whole lot of scripture to it. And so we look at it today. What we also need to understand is that this story was told in the context of the other stories. Okay? If, if the other cultures around you, the other nations, have stories about a big flood, and yours is exactly the same, does that mean it really happened? Does that mean that you're just stealing their ideas? Or are you trying to say something about what you believe? And I really think it's the last. It's about what you believe. You see, the other flood stories had to do with the pettiness of the gods. That'll sound familiar, right? If you've studied mythology in school, the, all of the gods of ancient antiquity, they, they, they would fight with each other. And there was always one, thankfully, that was looking out for us, right? Maybe brought us fire, <laughs> maybe did something good for us. Well, that was what happened in the other flood story. There was one of the gods who didn't want to see humanity wiped out. The other gods were like, we don't need these humans. Let's toy with them and we'll flood them and kill them all, right? And there was one that kept, he kept announcing to the humans what, what to do. And that's how the ark got built so that there were some saved. That's how that story was being told. Well, the Hebrew people in their imagination imagined a different God. Imagined only a single God. Which of course creates a problem for explaining when you look around and you see evil in the world and you see destruction, and you see evidence of perhaps this great mother of all floods that might have happened at one time, how and why did God allow or make that happen? Because you can't blame it on one God over another. And they even resisted having an evil force. I know a lot of answers in Christianity and a lot of Christian thought is, well, the devil did the bad things and God did the good things, right? But that's not really what the Bible tells us. That's not our story. We need to be careful to avoid that. So the Hebrew people saw conflict in the mind of God. And think about that for a second. That's an interesting concept. We often don't think about God anguishing that way, but that's exactly what we hear in the story. God is regretting the creation of humanity. And evil is mentioned as existing, not being created. I don't know where, right? The Bible isn't telling us something about the creation of evil, other than placing its, its existence in us. <laughs> We're the evil in the story, and God doesn't want to see evil, and God wants to get rid of it, and anguish is over this. But anguish is to the point of saying, I can't kill all the humans, so God basically does a reboot. Kind of like our slides this morning, <laughs> you know? Humanity 2.0 is what this story is about. That there will be a restart. The ancient Hebrews struggled with the problem of evil, not in the way we do. They weren't trying to figure out how a good God can allow evil to happen. They said evil exists, what's God going to do about it? That was the question that was being posed here. It wasn't about how did things happen? How did evil come to be? How did this flood happen? Those weren't the important questions. The real important question is why? Why? Why are we still here? What does God want from us? Who are we in the eyes of God? And those are the kind of questions we should be asking today as well. That's the point of a story like this is to get us to ask those kind of questions. So who are we? The good news is we're just like Noah. The bad news is we're just like Noah. <laughs> Noah is said to be righteous. He's the good guy. He's the best that God could find. And after the ark rests on the, uh, on, on the mountaintop there and they get out and they start all over, he, uh, you know, like, like any good human decides that planting a vineyard is a good idea, you know? And then getting drunk seems to be a good idea. <laughs> I mean, this happens verses after God has this wonderful salvation of the people. Noah's like, okay, thanks. <laughs> That's who we are. It's also interesting to imagine the pieces that aren't in the story. Did Noah try to tell everybody else to get on board? 
did no one know that it was just going to be him and his family? How, how would you carry that burden, right? right? There's room in the story for those kind of questions. The story doesn't tell us those answers. Some of the medieval retelling of the story, some of the imagination there was that Noah's wife was considered cantankerous because she didn't want to get on the boat without her friends. That's a good cantankerous. <laughs> but we're just like these people. Some of us will care about the others. Some of us will care only about ourselves. Some of us will be obedient to God and do the thing and build the ark. And some of us will say, you're nuts. And we'll drown. <laughs> these are stories that reflect who we are. That's what myth is. The mythological imagination exist for us to make meaning, to try to make some sense out of what we see around us, not to describe things that once happened in a certain way. And I know that will come as news to the people in Kentucky who built their ark and said, this is how it worked, and then had to sue the insurance company when it was damaged by flood. Irony is lost on these people. But anyway, <laughs> Where was I going with that? I just kind of, can you believe the ark was damaged by the flood? Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> the mythological imagination is about what happens again and again and again. So what is happening in our day that is ark-like, that is something we need to listen to in our day and understand? And if we don't see climate change and the rising tides and the rising water levels as a perfect parallel to the Noah story, we're not paying attention. And we should be building an ark. And what's that going to look like? An important takeaway from this story is that God is present before the flood, during the flood, and after the flood. God is always present. And so before the flood, there's an opportunity to repent. During the flood, there's an ark to preserve a remnant. And after the flood, there is a promise from God. God places the bow, the weapon. God disarms. God unilaterally disarms. That's how we would understand the story today. The rainbow, the bow in the clouds, is the weapon of war, the, the, the archer's bow placed in the cloud to remind God. Notice that God says, when, when the rains come, I will, place the ar I will place the bow in the clouds to remind me to not bring more harm. God unilaterally disarms. There's a covenant between God and not just Noah, and not just God's people, or not just humanity, but with all of creation, that destruction won't come again, and we don't have to do a stinking thing to benefit from this covenant. God does it all on God's own. That's the takeaway from the story. That from the very beginning, with the regrets, and during the time of destruction, with, with the saving of the remnant, to the covenant with all of creation to do no harm, God's heart is shown to us in all of its complexity, in all of its longing, and all of its confusion for us. God shows us that there is a way out of no way, always. So whatever we need today, we may not be able to solve on our own, but we can lean on our God, not in some supernatural save us from ourselves way, but in a real save us from ourselves way, because God, we know you will do no harm. You love us and care for us. And that even if we're floating on a leaky boat in the midst of a storm, you are present and we can live there. That we aren't stuck in our current time of evil and destruction, nor do we need to have to wait for some promised future because you are present wherever we are on that. Sometimes that's all we can hold on to. So friends, let's hold on to that today. The promise of God to make a way out of no way. Amen. And so in the midst of the storms of our daily living, 
What concerns do we have to bring before our God? What joys do we have to share? And we'll begin as we do each week with uh, those who are online. And if you would like the prayer request shared during our, our email during the week, make sure that it gets typed in the chat as well or written on paper here so it can be shared. But uh, is there anyone online who has a joy or concern to share? Um, I do. Pray prayers for our friend Jeff in Ohio, who is, um, he had complications after his surgery, had an infection after shoulder surgery. So prayers for his recovery. This is our prayer. Um, prayers for all those lost on 9-11. Um, since then, as a result of 9-11 and all of their families. Yeah. and prayers for the hungry and the homeless. This is our prayer. How about in the room? If you have something to share, we can get the microphone to you. Thank you. Prayers for our grandson, Jace, who is having his left knee operated on at Boston Children's Hospital on Tuesday. This is our prayer. Prayers for my Aunt Cindy, who was on a hike in North Carolina and tripped on a root and broke her arm. Um, she is able to just have it put in a sling, but she's still getting x-rays and things taken. So. This is our prayer. Prayers for all of those people around the world that are affected by climate change, floods, fires, all of those things that are really affecting us in this day and age. We've got to do something about it. This is our prayer. I will give prayers of gratitude for the young woman whose name I can't remember who got the legislature to start divesting the main pension, state pension fund from, uh, from the, you know, the environmental, social, um, uh, so um, that w that's a very, very good start for me. This is our prayer. <laughs> I'll just toss it. <laughs> yeah, right. it. <laughs> um, I just want to say a prayer for the people of England and the people of the world who just lost their monarch and for the consequences of that because I don't think people realize what a big change this is going to, it's gonna mean for the people of the world. And um, yeah, amen. Well, let's take some silence because in silence, not only do we listen more closely to our God, we open ourselves up more intimately. Oh God, 21 years ago today, there were a handful of people with evil intent who found a way to create tremendous harm. 
great tragedy and suffering. And over the years we have responded, sometimes not so well. We don't know how to deal with our shock and our pain sometimes. May we be inspired by those who without hesitation understood their call to service and rushed into falling buildings to save lives, many giving their own. May we be the people who follow you in that way, who find your way when we don't think there is a way, who are willing to risk, willing to risk in the name of love, in the name of service, in understanding that salvation comes to us here and now, not then and there, that we don't have to wait, that we can know your presence in this moment. And so those things that are on our hearts that we offer to you that weigh us down, we know that you are carrying them. And those things that lift us up and give us joy, we know that you smile along with us and wish more of that for us. Help us to understand how much of this is our choosing. Because you always choose the rainbow, the splintered light diverse and beautiful, contained within what we see as sometimes nothing. Simple light, plain, ordinary. Remind us of the extraordinary in all of creation and most especially in each of us your creatures, your children, special and beloved to you, even as much as your child, our Savior Jesus was. We thank you for his ministry and teaching among us and for his words in the prayer that bind us together with your people in all times and all places, the prayer which we share together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm waking up the ash and dust Wipe my brow and sweat my rust I'm breathing in the chemicals I'm breaking in, shaping then checking out on the prison bus This is it, the apocalypse I'm waking up, I feel it in my bones Enough to make my system blow Welcome to the new age, to the new age Welcome to the new age, to the new age Radioactive, radioactive Radioactive, radioactive I raise my flags and dye my clothes It's a revolution, I suppose We'll paint it red to fit right in I'm breaking in and I'm shaping up 
then I'm checking out on the prison bus This is it, the apocalypse I'm waking up, I feel it in my bones Enough to make my systems blow Welcome to the new age, to the new age Welcome to the new age, to the new age Radioactive, radioactive 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 All systems go Some hasn't died Deep in my bones Straight from inside I'm waking up I feel it in my bones Enough to make my systems glow Welcome to the new age Welcome to the new age to the new age whoa, whoa. Radioactive, radioactive Radioactive, radioactive So a prompt to remember to make your offering. Whatever gift it is that you regularly give, perhaps you have your bank or your credit card or something take care of that for you on an automatic basis, that would be wonderful. Certainly using the portal on our website to make a donation is encouraged. If you're here in the room, you certainly can put it into plate. But in addition to our treasure we offer our time and our talent and so our question today which is not rhetorical what will you offer that can save some part of the environment you don't need to share but perhaps by offering how it is that you reply will be an inspiration and help others so if there's anyone in the the room here who would like to share the microphone's right there or we can bring it to you but it's better that way uh, or 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 with uh, uh, right well I wanted to see whoever spoke that's why I put it on speaker view so that whoever speaks online would be big <laughs> I, I it should work that way so if someone would like to share online uh, you can unmute and share your response don't be shy people this is an easy question because it's about the environment I know that many of you are committed to doing things uh, they they won't always be this easy each week. <laughs> Recycling and composting. Absolutely, thank you. Oh, push the button. Oh, come on. There's a green light. <laughs> It's not difficult to do something to our homes to increase efficiency, and there will be increasingly more grants and other incentives available to do that. Uh, I encourage people to look at Efficiency Maine for some ideas. There are also a lot of do-it-yourself things on the internet, some of which have more value than others, uh, but there are a lot of ways out there to make a difference. Excellent. Thank you. Any others? I know you're offering your gifts regardless whether you share them with others or not, but uh, again, perhaps you'd like to make your offering. Mm, picking up trash. <laughs> is the microphone working? Why, why is this microphone so difficult for us? <laughs> I buy, um, most of my clothes are secondhand. It's cheaper. It's really fun. 
<laughs> and, uh, you know, so th there's other bonuses other than, uh, you know, making of garments is a, is a big uh, cause of climate change. Excellent. Great idea. Thank you for that offering. At our house, I make my own um, reusable cleaning wipes, my own reusable cleaning solution. And we bought reusable Ziploc baggies so that we're not wasting lots of bags. Some of the gifts of the pandemic. Remember when you couldn't find <laughs> disinfectants and you had to make your own? It's, it, we've stuck with that at home. Thank you. Others? Well, I'm sure there are there are other ideas, other offerings. Thank you for those who've shared those. And of course, we offer to God the gift of our participation in God's justice. And so we take a moment for that offering now from someone, right? Okay, last week we had someone ready to share and, we, and I didn't have it in. This week we don't have it? That figures. Okay, that tracks. That's good. Okay, that's fine. Um, well then, we can move right along to the announcements, of which there are a number. Thankfully, they're all in our... Uh, oh, let me... I got to switch. Got to push the button or you don't get it. Uh, these are all in the weekly email as well. So uh, hopefully you subscribe and get that and you'll see what's going on. The, uh, the big news is this time next week, we will be getting ready for the installation and welcoming some guests, we hope. Uh, certainly guests online, if nothing else. So uh, it'll be hard for them to eat the goodies that you bring, but, you know, maybe we can ship them to them if they don't show up but there will be people and so uh i i think we're in good shape are we in good shape anybody need to talk about any details for next week at this point okay um we'll we'll hope for the best hope for good weather and uh and a good time so we're looking forward to that uh, next up, we are going to uh, resume our Thursday evenings. We took a hiatus for the summer, but we'll, uh, we talked, we always talk about coming back. In fact, we liked it so much, we talked about maybe getting together over the summer, but we liked summer too much and we didn't, but that's okay. Uh, but you know, now's the time. So uh, at this point, we will gather on Zoom on Thursday. Anybody who's interested, uh, use the same link that you use for this service and uh, we'll take up whatever we want, but the only uh, uh, suggestion so far, which is one I'm inclined to go with, is to watch the uh, videos from Darkwood Brew that, that correspond to this series. So uh, um, some of what we're doing is based on that material. You saw actually in the, in the threshold moment, you saw Eric's trailer to this Eric Elness, who is going to preach at my installation next Sunday. Uh, he's the host of Darkwood Brew. That came from a Darkwood, that Darkwood Brew episode for this week. Uh, the music, by the way, also, uh, Nomaly Brennett is available. Her music is available online. She's quite a talent. I've, she's performed at each of the churches I've served so far. So if she ever comes to Maine, we'll have to have her perform. But uh, uh, in any case, uh, that's, we'll, we'll do that unless we have a different suggestion. The group that gathers can do what they want. So... That's coming up on Thursday. Uh, a few things in the wider church. I know you can't probably read all of these things, but you'll notice that uh, that uh, a couple in September and a few in October are events uh, that are offered online by the uh, conference. So again, look for those details. There's some interesting things coming up you might uh, be interested in uh, being a part of. Uh, in October, the business meeting of the conference is coming up and we need to be ready for that. But there are some classes and some other things. Uh, streamlining governance. You want to talk about governing the church because who doesn't, right? That's exciting stuff. Actually, I'm excited about it. But, but, uh, but anyway, th those are some opportunities coming up. Uh, there's also this opportunity that uh, should be interesting. Carter Haywood is, uh, is quite uh, 
quite, a, quite a theologian. She's got some great thoughts. I have not read her book, but uh, talking about white Christian nationalism is certainly pertinent to the moment. And so on Wednesday the 21st, there's a free online uh, gathering with her speaking. And uh, again, links and details are in the margin notes during the week. And uh, as well, there is the uh, convocation coming up in October for the BTS Center. And their topic is imagination and collective liberation for a climate changed world. So I thought that might pique some people's interest and uh, want to participate in that as well. So uh, again, check out the uh, weekly email for all the details on these things. Are there uh, other announcements? Anything else we need to bring up while we're together? Prompt anyone with? Or shall we sing our closing hymn? Friends, whatever way you go from here, whatever is in your path, whatever path you take, whether you need an alternate or take the one that you have planned, know that you do not go alone. For the Spirit of our God is always with you, always guiding you, always prompting you, whether leading you on or pushing you from behind. <laughs> and always with one another. Because even when you walk alone, you know that you have community to uphold you. You know that you do not walk alone. You walk God's way, which is often a way out of no way. And so walk it and live it so that you give glory to God the Creator. May this Creator God who knows even the sparrow that falls lift you on gentle breezes that you might soar with eagles and may God bless you with insight and wisdom. Give glory also to the Christ who comes to you continuously among the least, the last, and the lost. May the Christ bless you with the gift of tears to shed with those who weep, both rejoicing and in sorrow. And give glory to God's Holy Spirit, wild and untamed, wild as any wild goose. May this wild goose spirit of our God lead you into places where you will not go on your own and grant you that touch of foolishness that you need to believe that God's way is the way and may appear out of no way. And may the love of God be with you all and all those whom you love 
and all those whom none but God loves, now and until that day of God's judgment, when justice will roll down like waters, and peace will blossom among all the peoples. Amen. Mm -hmm.